is when I prepare for a CCDP, Cisco Certified Design Professional. Uh, at that time, I learned thoroughly about this picture. This is from a very old uh, textbook for Cisco. Uh, this is the ISP, Internet Service Provider. We have two of them coming in. You have a firewall here. Maybe you have some e-commerce, which is PMZ. You want somebody to visit your site and connect back here. Back behind the firewall, you have core, campus core, distribution and access layer. Now, uh, most of us, we refer this one as uh, edge. Okay, so we have core, distribution, and edge, or access layer. Directly attached to core will be the server farm. So core and server farm usually is inside a server room. Air conditioning, lifted floor, big every day, clean up, semi-annually, very cold inside. Google, Google server room is room temperature. I like it. Uh, most, most server room in the world is very cold. Uh, I need to put uh, cold in it, in, into it. And then we have remote access VPN. <coughs> we have side-to-side -side VPN. And these two are old days. PSTN is the telephone dialing and frame relay. Not many people still use it. Okay, and this is remote. Uh, and enterprise over there, and this is your remote side. Uh, <clears throat> we have a remote side data center just like this. I mean, this is a, a complete design. For example, maybe you have another data center in, in Atlanta, like a, a clone. You have traveler or home user, payload workers, and enterprise uh, branch. We have on the cover everything in this book, and I mean this picture. Okay, uh, let me start with internet because the last picture I said ISP first. Okay, internet, and then we have all the router. If your enterprise is uh, participating in the internet interchange then this router will be a very high end, very expensive, running BGP, multiple ISP, you are the transit. And if you show IP route to show the I, uh, routing table, it will be hundreds of hundreds. Last time I showed IP route, it took 30 minutes before it reached to the end. Um, today I want to introduce our data center. Our data center does not use that high end router. It just uses uh, two Cisco switches stacked together. So we do not allow any internet traffic to come through us. We don't want to be transit. So we have default route to two ISPs. Anyway, we have a border for this job. And then the media behind border with firewall, this is typical, a very typical enterprise uh, network. And then we have core, like I mentioned, three layer. Wireless controller, server farms, and from core down we have distribution to every building. Uh, in the following um, slides, I'll introduce our campus structure. So, uh, buildings, and then access the edge switches to every uh, PC, computer host. And then, of course, we have scanner, printer, iPhone, etc. Those are the function of the uh, users. So we provide this infrastructure. This is what we call a typical enterprise. It's our structure. So we have two ISP. Uh, ISP1, ISP2. Used to be the other thing. Now we call them windstream. Used to be essentially. As of last Saturday night, we cut it over to MFN2, My Florida Network 2. And the bandwidth we increased from 100 to 400. And this is uh, 100. Not long, not long from now, uh, soon we're going to have 500 plus 400. Okay, uh, I have that in the uh, slide. We have Senate district offices. They connect back through our border. Terminal at firewall, cyber side VPN. Uh, 
over here, we have our um, attached agencies, a very close neighbor who uh, holds senator and house representatives uh, somewhere each. So they connect to us via the uh, border. And we have a secondary ISP uh, complex. We have a lower, not as good as this one. We have a lower, lower level uh, firewall for this one. This is mainly for wireless. Okay. And then coming down, core, like the previous picture. And then these are the building uh, distribution switches. So we have paper building, not building, Senate building, Capitol Tower, and Capitol Senate. We have five buildings. So we call this a campus network. Core, of course, is the center of everything. But just in case the across the street fiber got cut, here is another hub. So Senate office building provides connection to all other buildings. Okay? If everything got cut, at least we have a 100 meg backup. Uh, I have another picture and a slides for this. So, if the major fiber got cut, we have a electrical connection. Also, it's power, it's fiber, but uh, we pay for subscription and just for disaster. So, when disaster happened, we still have this. This one can connect both half. This is the half major half, and this is. Street. And then <coughs> from here to RSPPS, where is it? Right here. We have what we call a backdoor. So in addition to internal network, outside, we also have a backdoor to our neighbor agencies. And this is another backdoor. So if this one is down, we can route it through this, this one. Again, this RSVPS is what I just mentioned. Um, there is a unit that hosts uh, both Senate and House uh, web pages, and we help them route it. Okay. So this is our devices. Like I said, border we have two switches stacked together as one. Uh, and these switches we have two switches stacked as one. Those are Cisco 3850. We just upgrade that. Two firewalls, we have 5555, very strong, powerful firewall, and they coexist as uh, high availability. Uh, so if one is down, you switch to the other one within one pin. So you can you will just drop one pin. Uh, how we can do such fast? Before, before it used to be for two uh, firewalls used to be the uh, heartbeat connection is much lower than the real customer connections. But now they require that the heartbeat is as fast as the others. So we can do firepower in it. Firepower means security portion that you guys are interested, interested in, IPS, etc. Plus the live traffic, live cache. Uh, there is a heartbeat between A and B, and they keep it. Uh, simultaneously or instant, okay, instantaneously. And we have two core switches, uh, 6509E core switches. This is very expensive. Each one costs more than a CDN, analog state. Two put together as one. VSS means some virtual, Cisco term, virtual thing. Uh, when, when two separate hardware we connect it with VSS. You, when you make it, it, you see it as one. Although physically they're separate. Uh, each side of the circuit. Okay. And there are many good points about VSS. It's beyond this topic. I don't want to say much about it. But at least you can see the management is very easy. Okay. And we have two server farm switches. It is again Cisco. Basically, we are Cisco shop. It's a 4500X. Every port is 10 gig. So we combine several ports together, for example, two or four ports together, make them 20 or 40 gig, and we'll connect to a uh, VM, virtual 
virtual machine. Right now, most servers are virtual machine. Chessy, lots of blades, lots of memory. They share memory, lots of CPU in it. It's just a, a drawer with lots of blades. So the uplink can be 20, 40. So we provide four channels for So we have two server farm switches to do the job. So our wireless controllers, just like the entire picture that, that I show you, we have controllers somewhere. And again, everything is two. You can see this is uh, to avoid single point of failure. Okay, so we have two. Uh, again, it's high availability failover. Uh, at any time, one is working, but if this one for some reason doesn't work, it will fail over to another one immediately. Okay. Okay. All distributed switches, we have two. Uh, we should have done the ESS, but when we purchased that, at that time, we did not have that already, so it's failed. But this failover is not, uh, we have A and B, it's not like A always working, B is idle in there, no. It's per VLAN. So, uh, some subnet use this one, some subnet use that one. If this one down, everybody use this one. If this one is down, everybody use that one. Uh, in between, we use OSPF to, to do the uh, automatic dynamic adjusting. So this is quite efficient. And again, OSPF, the hello packet is every 10 seconds, there's a hello packet. So anything go wrong, the network will converge within 10 seconds. So this is quite efficient. And all together we have about 60 switches. Of course, most of them are edge switches for the end user. Unfortunately, we do not we do not afford two switches for one PC. Okay. But we do provide one, two, three, maybe four, three or four more drops per sun room. Okay, my room I have four drops. So one connects to north closet, one connects to south closet, another one connects to um, lab, and the fourth one connects to server room. I do have have multiple ports. But again, they do not connect into my PC simultaneously. If my PC just use one of them at a time. So like you like you can understand the uh, the edge switch, there's no point to make dual edge switch edge switches for one PC. Okay, you can have dual link, but at any time just one link is connected to your PC. Besides, most PCs they only have one link card, the network interface card. Mine is different. I have a, a full port uh, net card so I can connect here, there, and there. So, my own PC, I need to do some routing. Branch routers. This is uh, for the Senate, uh, Senate District offices. Each office, we have one. We have 40 senators. We have one for lab. And some senators, they have satellite offices. So, altogether, there are 44. And we have more than 250 wireless access points uh, among these buildings plus uh, senator's office, which always has one. We are replacing it right now, as of today. I was sitting in my office trying to troubleshoot the uh, cutover, leftover uh, routing problem, but my team, my colleagues, they were busy replacing the AP for our campus. 1,500 IP phones. This will give us a, a, a proper number of the user because usually perform for you per user, but uh, the PC. Uh, this is not everybody. In our environment, uh, we only support some of the legislature, some of the legislature unit. They have their own, so we provide like 60 percent of them. So about 60% of the legislature, we, we have about uh, 1,500 users. Overview of our uh, network. FSU owns a lot of IPs, you know that. FSU owns, if not 10, at least eight class B. We do own 32 plus 16, two sets of uh, IP addresses, IPv4 addresses. Uh, we, we, we're lucky to own them. It's not easy uh, to have those public IP addresses. And we have our own 1A 
base number. So if we want to be uh, a part of the internet BGP, uh, be a transit site, we could. So we own an uh, AS number. Uh, wireless user, <coughs> we allowed internal and guest uh, about 1024 IPs. So maximum about that. Um, each session, during session, we we saw a total of 1,000. So internal and, and external and gas wires put together. So this is uh, quite good so far. Okay. Some somebody, uh, some people they <coughs> they have their uh, laptop, uh, pad, phones, and maybe some other thing. I, we found that one person has four. So it will grow. Sometime, some, sometime later we need to grow the same. Uh, ISP bandwidth today is 100 plus 100. <coughs> and I mentioned history. This history is very short. Like within 10 years, or within eight years. Eight years ago, we have 45 plus 45. We always have two ISP. 45 plus 45. And then they found that during the session, it's not enough. So one of them increased to 100. And we promised we would drop it back in two months when the session is over. Uh, we never kept our promise. Instead, we increased the other ISP to 100. So this one for several years. And last Saturday, we made this change. And in the near future, it will be 500 plus 400. We have secondary ISP. For example, um, Tallahassee, we have Comcast to entertain our half of our guest wireless. And we have Spectrum, Cox, and and the writing for the uh, district offices, the branch offices for the Senate. As far as there are two groups, like I said, internal users and guest users, we want to separate them. Internal users are allowed to access anywhere, but wireless, we just directly send them out, out of our command. So all APs are controlled, central control, by a wire controller. This make this make our job much much easier. Consider if you need to configure each AP, and we have 260 AP, you could we could never end the management. So now, for example, we are replacing, for example, one AP from the person one AP. You open the box, there's AP. You plug in, you get into the console. Okay, the default is Cisco Cisco. So you can get into the console. You just need to type one command. This command says, find the controller. That's it, find the controller. And then a few minutes later, after you finish the communication, the wireless controller will show this new AP's MAC address. Okay, identify that. From then, the wireless controller will take over any configuration. You, you type in whatever configuration you need to type in, SSID, belong group, subnet, etc. Even this IP. Uh, it's IP, we use uh, DHCP. But as soon as we put it into the right location, it gets the correct uh, IP address, then we go to the DHCP server to reserve it. That's it. So open the box, say go to wireless controller, and you set at once controller and set whatever you want to set for this AP. And then this AP, you disconnect that. You plug into the correct location, you press the old AP, and it will get a new IP address. And you go back to your DSP server, say reserve it, that's it, one, two, three. So uh, everything controlled by the wireless controller make the uh, job easier. <coughs> and then we have Cisco Prime to um, provide map of the building uh, associated with the location of the APs. So we can adjust the signal strength or see uh, if this AP is up and how many users associated with that. Uh, this is controlled by Cisco Prime, another program, <coughs> another server for that. And for the internal user, we use uh, Windows AD, we have a list of all the users at Windows AD, and we use uh, <coughs> IPv4, Pat1, 11x, the uh, radius. We have a radius server 
to authenticate the wireless, uh, wireless feature. And this is for internal. And for guest, they will be redirect to a hotspot. And all you need to do is check, I agree. You are on the internet. You are on the wireless. And because you don't use uh, 11, I11X, we do not allow you to come internal. Just uh, let you go outside. Go, go to the internet uh, directory. So we have two different kinds of users. Okay, now the question is, how do I direct the guest wireless into internet? How do I distinguish whether you're an internal user or, or the, a guest wireless? Of course, <clears throat> if you are guest wireless, you'll get a different IP, okay? If you are internal user, you get this kind of IP, say group A. If you are guest wireless, you, if you're a guest, then you use uh, group B as your IP address. Now, I'm one of them. I want to go to the internet. When I reach to some point, I have a mechanism. Okay, if you are this IP, I want to translate you to a particular representative IP. I use this one is because our uh, Comcast modem may give us 15.252 something. So I prefix say 192.168, all 500 or 1,000 wireless uh, users, if you want to get out, <coughs> before you reach to the border, I net you into one IP. At the border, at the border, I have a mechanism. If you are from this IP, go that way. If you are from, from is very important. If you are from this IP, go that way. We call this policy routing. Routing usually is by destination. If you want to go to Taipei, go front door. If you want to go to Miami, go back door. If you want to go to Washington DC, go this door. This is by destination. By source, if you are from Tallahassee, you want to go to New York, go this door. If you are from Jacksonville, you want to go to Tokyo, go that door. When you mention about from, it's more complicated. For example, firewall does not have that uh, capability of doing so. Only a router can do it, or a layer three switch with a router capability. Cisco's device, they have different label. This 3850 is our border switch. We install a layer three uh, iOS into network operating system that is capable of doing BGP routing. So this is as if it were a, a uh, router. So we can do this. <clears throat> One thing I do not like is Cisco Lightos. Uh, we used to have 3750 and it was able to do NAT. Unfortunately, the new 3850, although they promise whatever function 3750 has, they will have that. But they broke the promise. They want you to buy a router. A router can do that. Now, none of the Cisco switch can do that, which I hate very much. Because of that, we need to purchase the, the extra uh, firewall to do just to do the NAT. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you in the next picture. NAT. Very important. <coughs> NAT is Network Address Translation, NAT. It is very important if you have an internal IP address, you want to go out. For example, at home, you don't have any firewall, but nobody can attack you because at home you're doing 192, 168, or something. And when you go out, you will translate into a Comcast IP address, which is public, maybe Class A address. Uh, you can translate as many as you want into one IP and it will take you up. When they come back, when they come come back and they try to reach individual PCs, maybe you have five PCs at home, it will be by port. We call that they, uh, they are full, port number, or a service port. Why is it too complicated? Let me, let me just stop it here. Anyway, that is very important. So this is the way we treat our wireless either internal users or guest users, we treat it by netting to an IP, and then based on this IP, we select which door you, need, you should go out. We could have changed the entire mechanism 
into MPLS valve. If we do so, it will be clean. All the gas valves should be considered external. By doing this, we totally separate the two traffic. There's no mingle. We don't need to use excess control disk to control the traffic. It will be totally separate. The price is we need another set of file to do the job. And of course, the second set can be a lower lower level uh, firewall. Uh, we chose not to do so. House, however, the other side of the legislature, they they do use uh, MPLS to separate internal and external users. So they have two network systems. We could have done that. Years ago, uh, we upgraded the core 65 E, we were considering Nexus. Uh, if, we, if we have chose Nexus as our core switches, then we could have chosen that. This is my border. Again, I have two switches stacked together. <coughs> and the way I, I'm doing is that, for example, if I configure port 204 for CenturyLink, and I configure the same, 104 for CenturyLink as well. So if any of the switches down, I can just unplug the cable and plug to the other. So up and lower the two switch, same, same position port, I configure them the same. So make my team worker job easier. It's just anything down, just reconnect to, to uh, another member of the stack. We have VLAN 101 internal. VLAN 10, go to common services. We then 20 go to the century. We then 30 go by birthing. So we have two major ISP plus a small tunnel or channel to our uh, neighbor agencies, or our state neighbor agencies. And then we have a standard uh, for the quads. That was our major uh, border connections. And this is for district office side-to-side uh, -side VPN. With 1 through 20, we let them jump in by one IP address. And of course, 10 minutes at the uh, uh, file. For 21 through 42, uh, 40 only, 42 is our lab. We uh, terminate to another uh, IP address. And why we do that? Because this one, we managed for CenturyLink to take over, to take care. And this one, we, we managed for uh, uh, thing to take care. So in case, uh, normal, in normal days, half goes one ISP, <coughs> the other half goes the another ISP in the normal days. In case one of the ISP goes down, the rest of them will be fell over to another. Okay. We tested over and over and everything works until last Saturday. So right now, the fail over, we are still troubleshooting. Uh, about the cut over, there are four major uh, projects. Uh, up to yesterday, everything is cool, except the fail over does not work very well. So we need to uh, have a troubleshooting on that one. But anyway, this is the basic uh, concept. Now, <coughs> for each Cisco, I mean, in each uh, district, we have modern connection to uh, either Comcast, Spectrum, or Cox. This is the major one. And we participate, uh, subscribe to small business, high speed. And then we have another one, which is the SIM card inside the router, a module. I mean, SIM card into the module, the module is in the router. In case this one is down, it will be fell over to LTE. And this router costs a lot. But we change it from dedicated uh, WAN connection, which is T1, 1.5 meg, to this side to side, at least 50 meg. So all the users, all the customers are happy. Only one drawback. Those uh, Comcast or Spectrum, they are not good all the time. So they go down from time to time. Doesn't matter because the major traffic goes to the internet, never come back to Tallahassee. This side to side is for them to communicate with the server farm. Okay? So they don't feel it. 
unless they are on the phone, because they have IP phone, and we extend our phone system to the to the uh, district office. If they are on the phone, and the service got bad, then uh, but it seldom happens. And we provide better service. We proactively make sure the connection is good. On the other hand, the house side, because they have 120 representatives, we only have 40 senators. So they're, they're doing this is uh, best effort. They give services as best effort. Because you know Comcast, Spectrum, they're all best effort. So when something happens, the customer will call for help. When they receive a call, they troubleshoot. But we actively monitor every second. So that's the difference of the service level. Okay, this is the, uh, what I just said. This is one district office. We have router, we have switch. And then rather than switch, we call this, uh, or what they call router on a stick. And we have four VLANs, chunk, VLAN 10 for data, VLAN 100 for management, 350 for voice, and 400 for box. So basically this is a, a entire function District office. This district office uh, for wireless user, we, again, we use uh, DAP 111 next to uh, authenticate them. And back to RC, we use size side VPN. And for the internet, we can go out directly. Okay, now, IP phone. Primary connection by modem, IP phone should work very well. In case the modem is cut, we use LTE. Automatically, automatically move everything into LTE, including phone. Okay, we tested, it. it's good. Now, if both connections are down, we have what we call a survivable remote side uh, uh, telephone, it's SRST. Suppose we don't have any data connection at all, the phone can still go to the local uh, telephone company. So we tested, we choked. Cut both connections. We want to make sure that the center office can still make phone calls or receive phone calls. So we do have an RJ11 connection for the uh, for the uh, radio phone. This is the I want to see. Legacy phone. Yeah, I mentioned that between core and center office building, we have a, a backup running by OSPF. This is it. Although we changed it already, but same idea, same picture with the prior. We, we, we just change uh, the device. Okay. So from core to Senate, Senate office building, we have a central link connection 100 meg. Okay. We have DC, which is layer one uh, device, change from copper to fiber. Okay. So fiber, copper. They provide us a switch, layer two switch. We jump into the edge switch, edge switch connect to distribution. Only distribution switch has the brand. Only they can think. Edge switch is just hands, they do not think. So we propagate VLAN over. This VLAN will communicate with our core, same VLAN, 526, 526 here. Um, so from core to this one, it would be looked as if it's a LAN connection, internal connection. No matter this, how this one is, we don't care. We only see each other, this guy and this guy. And as long as we have connection, we can apply OSPF to that as if it's another connection between core and the distributed switches. So when this one is down, this one will be pick up. When this one is up, OSPF, you can put a cost. You put a higher cost, you will not go this uh, failover route. You will go the major route. So until all the fibers across the street are cut, before that, this one won't be pick up. Okay, so this is basic. We pay a lot for this. Each 100 meg, remember? Internet, we only have 100 meg, right? This one for backup, we never use it. There was never a disaster. We paid more than 1,400 per month for one link. So two, 
almost three thousand dollars per month for nothing. This is just for backup. So we are considering, <clears throat> even we cannot wear it now, but we are considering. Don't subscribe to that. Why don't we just uh, buy or rent from another fiber company across the street, or uh, as long as they can provide us a another pack of the fiber across the street for the two buildings, then we are good, right? So we do have a a lookout for that. Hopefully, you don't need to pay that for nothing. It's just for um, for disaster. But if we bury, or, or not bury, if we use, make use of another uh, major fiber, then it would not be a, a failover. I would make them pull chunky, okay? Both active, active, at any time, because they, they are equal, right? Right now, they are not equal. One is 10 gig. The major connection is 10 gig, and the backup is only 100, so they are not equal right now. For this is, uh, security area and this is another way I mentioned VPN so from outside in a remote user into your domain it can be side, uh, a client VPN it can also be a secure share connection secure share pull forward and I forgot the port okay. pull forward uh, when I used to work at College of Engineering, I did not use uh, VPN. Until very late, we use a micro tick, very small, $45 American dollars, very tiny gizmo as the VPN server. Before that, personally, I used Secure Share Pull Forwarding. That is, I open one PC or one server for outside to be able to reach. And then once you get in there, that will be your base or source of getting uh, inside the, the, the environment, getting into all other devices through this one. Google, security, share, poll for Google app, and you need to have ABC. A is your PC, home PC, B is the allow server, and C is anybody inside the, inside the domain. Okay. For example, you have an MRTG internally available for internal users to check the bandwidth traffic profile of your connection, which is not open to the internet. How do you get to it? From outside, you SSH to one dedicated internal server. From there, then you browse that MRTG web page. This is an example. This is the neighbor connection. This is us, we are here. And we connect to our neighbor by filter. Where is the filter? Audit General in Pepper Building, uh, Governor's Office in Not Building, another one in Not Building. This is the filter. I was looking for the filter. And we go, uh, this is another filter. We go to them by what I call a backdoor. Okay? So when we reach them, uh, we don't go out to the internet, internet. so we, we give them a special route. If you want to go to AG, go this way. If you want to go to RSPPS, go that way. But this would cause a problem like this. The problem I call it uh, a symmetric routing issue. Suppose I have a neighbor agency user. They try to reach our DMZ, okay, a uh, public web page. Ideally, I want them to go by internet, by outside. But for some reason, they, they need to do some business inside. So they come in from their gateway. They say, oh, you want to go to come to uh, OLITS? We are OLITS, O-L-I-T-S. Uh, go this way, left hand side. And our back door will allow them, okay, we check, allow them come in through core to DMZ. Now, firewall, if I do not have a returning route, said that if you want to reach there, go this way, inside. This is inside interface, outside interface, and DMZ interface. If here I do not say for the returning traffic, then by default, it will go out. My default is going out. It will go by either internet or at border, I have a special treatment, again, for this guy. 
So we'll go by common services. Earlier I mentioned common service and come back here. Okay, so we have what we call as asymmetric routing. You can pin it, you can trace it all, everything's cool, layer three is cool. But there are six the presentation. The web, web page contents will not show. So anytime you have routing correctly, but the web page does not show, tell them that port 80 does not come up, does not open, most likely you have a, a asymmetric routing. So the solution is right here. You need to add a static route for this to come back the same way, okay? And I mentioned that here, in case it's not taken care of by this one, it will go, by default, it will go by internet, which is even worse, okay? Another way, I want them to come in by internet. Right here, they can say, oh, if you want to come here, go by internet, go this way. Go this way here, again, a net. Everybody in this domain will be netted into one particular IP address. When they come into our border, they, pre they are represented by one IP address. And both say, oh, you want to go to DMZ, come here. And come back to firewall again. This is by default route. Come up and go back by the representative. So internet will always work, unless, unless the ISP does not do their job. That's why I was awfully busy for the first three days. Because they cut over, the ISP doesn't do their job. Very, very bad. But here, internally, returning is our job to make it happen. So through multiple points, every point, there are, there are some function, and you need to check everywhere for, for the things to, to go. Um, unfortunately, this one it cannot be done by uh, dynamic routing like OSPF. This is special treatment we need to get around. This is the uh, new cutover. MFN2, they have a cloud. They have two PE, provider edge. And then they have CE, customer edge. This is we. We, we are customer uh, core, go out by um, Firewall border to their edge uh, edge router CE customer edge, and they have dual one to a primary, the other one to secondary, and then over here out they have four ISPs. So it's considered more robust just for internet traffic plus the common services. And then we have our own. Remember I said that we need a backup to send an office building. So we have our own, from here to here, we connect through one VDAN to uh, center office, which one? This one, center's office building, just like the other picture, and this is the new picture. And we also have another one, from here to Jiangnan's, we have a, a unit in Jiangnan's, we call that uh, ethics commons, so we need another LAN connection to Jiangnan's. Again, this, does not go through our firewall. This is a direct connection from core to those, so they're considered internal. A, a branch coming internal. Anybody? I mentioned three layers. Oh, core distribution, another one. Edge or access layer. Okay, if uh, it's too difficult to, to get a dedicated line, what is the usual uh, solution, alternative? Would you do like a VPN? Good. Because we can go to the internet, they can go to the internet, as long as there's internet connection, we can purchase a good device over there. For example, we have firewall here and we purchased that was quite expensive, a 40, 4321. And we can make side to side VPN for, for the link. Okay, how to provide prevent a wireless guest from getting into a into the internal domain. Uh, it sounded like you were using network address translation to give them a certain subnet that is denied access to their own services. Okay, I net that into a represented IP, yes, for them to get out. But to prevent, I didn't, I didn't mention it, to prevent uh, actually their access control list inside 
uh, do not allow them to get inside. Um, our way is not a very good way because I need the access control list. A better way would be totally separate them, but it costs more. You need another firewall to do the job. So yes, you, you heard me, uh, it is for outside, out, outbound traffic. The net is for outbound traffic. But the question is how to prevent that. The, the answer is uh, we use access control list. Do not allow them to visit our internal. Oh, anybody? Trace off. Changing the path from source to destination uh, by hopping routers. Good. So trace out is a very, very good command to troubleshoot between here and there. Any Anybody know about looking glasses? This is about internet BGP. We have a lot of issues over, over Saturday night. So the proof is that everybody log into the uh, browse, the uh, internet looking glass. This one will provide you a particular IP who announced this subnet to the internet. So we can see which ISP is taking care of which summit. So this is a tool, just like who is. This is a tool to, to show uh, you belong to which ISP or which ISP take you to the internet.